Right, so this is going to be going over lesson three, food history. Um, so to summarize really what's in the book, um, after I learned about all this holistic health stuff in college, and I was like, wait, what's really, what are we really supposed to be eating? I uh, started thinking, what, uh, exactly, what are we supposed to be eating? Um, what am I eating right now? What is the stuff I'm doing right now? Like, what is, is this the real diet we're supposed to be having? The standard American diet that I've been eating my whole life of a lot of dairy, bread, and processed sugary foods, maybe some fruits and vegetables. So I was more curious, instantly just like, whoa, what? And I did a deep dive into what, um, what these foods are, and it's kind of really confusing, honestly. It's still, uh, still very talked about and controversial. Um, but from my opinion, this is kind of a summary of all the foods we have in America and why we eat them, and all over the world, but uh, specifically in America. So sugar, this is maybe the most controversial of all, because it's kind of really confusing how sugar is, when one area, one of the most necessary things we need for all life, all organisms need for life, um, but, you know, people say it's also toxic and one of the worst carcinogens out there. Um, so, uh, really though, it's kind of simple. Uh, fruit sugar is, um, comes naturally in honeys, fruits, other than vegetables have small amounts of sugar. Um, and this is a simple carbohydrate that our body needs because it turns it to glucose and it has, um, we can make a this glucose is necessary for our brain to function and just our, uh, really for our brain to function and a lot of, um, all animals need this for brain function, glucose. Um, so it's really crucial for that. So thinking that being on a sugar-free diet is healthy is extremely unhealthy. Um, but at the other hand, we got kind of, uh, we like sweet things and, um, well, there were some, uh, reasons for why the government and the um, big food companies back in the day uh, created high fructose corn syrups and more synthetic uh, sugar-based things that they could put in foods because it was very kind of expensive, pure sugar. Um, and uh, yeah, high fructose corn syrup was uh, is kind of what they, what we all, um, sugar is now considered as like the more toxic thing. Um, it's now... Uh, but we're not even used anymore because it's so uh, it's widely known to be so toxic. And um, so here I have a little thing about a, an endocrinologist from Stanford. Um, and he also went to uh, MIT and got a degree in nutritional biochemistry. And he talks about the um, progression from Americans' diet and our sugar consumption and our uh, health factors from 1970s to today. And it's uh, really interesting. Um, and uh, he goes over all of how, what exactly sugar does to our body in terms of turning it into visceral fat because it's, it's our body's not going to just, um, our body doesn't really care how fat we are. So when we eat too much things, it um, stores it as fat. And um, sugar is so, so much high energy that it, our body stores it as visceral fat, which is the most, uh, which is the most dangerous kind of fat to have because it goes around the organs and um, can just put stress on the whole body and all the organs and the heart and makes the blood pressure high, does a lot of bad stuff. Um, so it's great, great to talk about that. Um, and then the next big thing that we've really loved is dairy. Okay, so dairy is, uh, well, it is one of our favorite things in modern times today. But really, what, uh, why do we drink dairy? Well, the main reason is because our ancestors who moved north from tropical areas where humans evolved, um, we were able to evolve because we had a lot of fruits and vegetables all the time. And then we moved north where we were starving all winter long. Starving all winter long, every year, everyone. Basically starving for like thousands of years to have just low amounts of food. Everyone that moved north and was in Europe and the northern parts of Asia um, really experienced this. And, uh, you know, history really shows it. Um, just a dramatic change of aggressive behavior from the people that moved north that needed this uh, winter. And one of the things they, they learned to love, and we still love today uh, because of them, 
is dairy. Cows were one of the th- biggest things that kept humans alive, especially in Europe. Without cows, we probably wouldn't have got so far. Everyone in Europe, the population of Europe, would be basically nothing. But especially me from Ireland, my grandparents from Ireland. Um, you know, we kind of survived off, like, purely cows. There was a, the little, the famine in Ireland. It was, uh, there wasn't even any cows. There was really nothing because, um, we had just a history of just having cows and breeding cheese and having the meat from cows. There was not so much other, uh, other foods really to keep us alive, really going, going long term. And there wasn't great agricultural techniques. Um, so it was tough. And cows were, they were, were like, Talk, th- we think dogs are man's best friend. Back in the day, cows were the man's best friend, a real man's best friend, because cows could help fertilize the field. The field was a huge project, and the cows provided like 500 pounds of pre- uh, power to be able to go, um, move things around. They used them to just move heavy objects around, like we used tractors to uh, sow, sow seeds and to fertilize. They would feed the cows, and the cows would... Um, their, their, uh, their, uh, you know, fertilizer, their manure is, uh, is, um, super high in nitrogen. So it's literally, it's like above, you know, regular shite. It's, uh, it's like premier nitrogen fertilizer that cows just make the factories of. So this stuff makes the growth of seeds really strong and it will make stuff more, more, uh, just more healthy, all kind of leafy greens, all kind of fruits and vegetables that they're growing. And throughout all of history, we this kind of manure style fertilizers have been seen everywhere. Um, and it's uh, really cool how we had this relationship with cows, because not only did they fertilize everything, but we could get milk and from them, which was really high in uh, calories, kept us alive as well. But we didn't really drink the milk too much. We mostly used it for cooking and making our favorite product ever. All of us, uh, European and stress tree, cheese, right? We have been come addicted to cheese. And it's not because it tastes good. It's because we survived off of it. We were surviving off of cheese. Everyone in Europe really was, if you had enough money, you were getting a good amount of cheese in your diet. Otherwise, you're eating lard, some kind of disgusting byproduct of an animal. But, you know, cheese was the way that the rich were doing it and that most people were going alone. And it was extremely expensive because it was so high in calories. It was like gold. It was like gold that could keep your family alive. And that's why um, today it's still one of the most expensive products in the supermarket because we love cheese. Um, Not just, but unfortunately we just love it because it tastes good. Um, We don't really understand that. It was predominantly used because we were starving to death and it's actually... Um, mold. It's actually kind of mold from uh, milk, and uh, it's a cultural fermented. It's bacterial growth. Bottom line, um, and it's just really bad for our bodies. It's uh, really bad for our bodies. It uh, as I'll get to later, but for now I just want to kind of just going over summarizing. Um, you know, I have little definitions there on the thing too. I just want to keep these under. And so yeah, I'm gonna cut it off here. We're gonna get into our one of our third favorite foods in America, eggs. Oh my gosh. <laughs>